Hey everyone, it's Joe Nazayas here from The Automator, and we got a really interesting script to share today. It's not ours, but um, is it Feiyu, I think, was the author? And it's an old script now. This is the V2 version of it. It's called Fine Text, but don't let that put you off because it's really like image search or pattern matching. And Isaiah and I, we haven't covered this because image search is the last of our resolves. Like we try not to do that because it's just not robust. And the stuff we do, we automate usually on multiple computers or other people's computers, image search breaks down and those kind of things. Sometimes it's needed though, right? So this tool, like if we had to automate my task in version two, I would be doing that video instead, but we don't. This fine text is available in V2. So we're going to cover some of the basics of how to use it. Um, and again, it's going to be looking for, you actually does have OCR, which is really complicated. It's kind of, that's what I was going to say. It's funny because it's kind of like OCR more than image search itself. But it's just a lot of pattern yeah. recognition of pixels. Yeah. And, uh, you can put text and search for that text in the, in the, screen and it will grab and find the pixels that make up that text not the text itself it's kind of weird well the, the name of the tool is fine text but it it again it's it's poorly named because i think it confuses a lot of people it's not quote unquote uh, text necessarily um so anyway right jump into how to use the tool um it's got a gui which this is why we're making this video because it's it's really a fairly complicated gui but it's a fairly complicated tool and it's an advanced tool. So I think uh, I'm going to start with how to capture, right? So if you, so this, let me make a point on this one. This tool works as a library and as the capture tool. It works both ways. So for example, in this case, if I go to my library folder, folder library, you will notice that I have here the fine text library. If you include this file in your program, you can use the functions of it. But if you double click on it, it would open this window. So it's both at the same time. It's, it is the library and also it is the capture tool. All right. So let's go ahead and show you how you can use this. I'll go to any window here. This is a, a window that is always on top. So let me just move this out of the way and let's go to a place where I have multiple folders like this or multiple icons that are the same. So you can see how this works. Uh, from this window, the one that I usually set to something the first time I start is this guy of the width and height. Usually I make a square out of it. 32 by 32 seems like a normal size to have for capturing. And then you hit the capture tool. And as you can see, you get a, win a window flashing in here that allows you to capture a region. As you can see, 32 by 32 is too big, but it's more, it doesn't more common. Right. So I want to capture the icon there. But notice how when I'm hovering over it, like there's this gray out color in there. That's part of what I'm going to tell you about capturing. The, when you're hovering, it has a little, oh God, let me put myself in here. It has a little tooltip that says, first click right button and then move away the mouse and then click again the right mouse bu button to capture. So I want to capture this guy. I press right click, now move the mouse away and you see that it stays there. And now when I right click again, now it captures. So it's a two-step approach. Interestingly enough, I think my yeah. DPI settings are not correct, I guess. Let me reload the script. It seems to me that I had changed my DPI settings. So if I reload this guy here, I should be good to go. See? Right, so let me capture that. Let's go to here. Capture, go. There you go, that's better. So now I got the area for the icon. I don't want to capture anything else. And for that reason, you will need for that, you will need these buttons right here. So these guys, the, the letters stand up for up, right, down, and left. And the positive numbers like this and that means how many lines you're going to remove from that. So I will remove three lines. If I removed too much, then you can use the negative to kind of like undo that one line. So that's what it is for. And 
what I usually do is just remove enough to then use the auto here. Oh, before using the auto, you have to convert it to black and white. So here at the bottom, you have a few buttons that allow you to kind of convert this image to black and white, which is what the tool really looks for. It's not looking for the colors, it's looking for the shapes. And now when I do the auto, it trims out all the white space. I want to remove these two lines here. Let me just remove those two. And now I do the auto and it kind of like squeezes tight in there, right? So I can just make sure that I get it correctly. And now that I did that, that's what it's going to be looking for. And this difference here allows you to make this a little bit more detailed or not. You, you just play with these numbers. I usually go for 20, 20 to 50, and it makes the image a little bit more detailed or not. Once you do that, that's it. You work with these guys to limit the search, here to limit your gray difference, and then you hit OK. I haven't used most of those things except for that one with the comment, which is kind of like naming your thing. So let's name it folder, for example, here. So when I hit OK, now you go to this part of the tool. You come back to the original part of the tool. Here you get a representation of what the icon looks like. And here you have the testing uh, mode. So for now, as you can see in the code, you remember the name that I set up? Here, folder, that's the name that I set up a few minutes ago in which I was just naming it. I could name it whatever I wanted. That comes in later. You can use it for identifying stuff. And these random numbers, this is the most important part. This is the binary representation of that image that the fine text is going to use to find it. So your code is going to need this guy, this line, and the function, the find text function, with some options on it. So, clear now what I have. Hold on. Yeah, uh, go ahead. You're saving it into a variable called text, right? Yes. And later, you use that. You could put what is defined as text into the function call itself, right? Just to clarify, yes. like he's doing it here to break it down to make it a little easier to follow. Um, but if you're not used to programming on a hotkey, that's kind of voodoo. So that's what I want to right. mention. Right. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to use the test function to verify that the script will find the image. So when I do that, it told me that it found 23 instances and where the first position is. And when I hit OK, it just highlights a few of them. Look at one of them. Look at the other. And I probably found all the others in here. And that's the interesting part about this function. You can have it find one thing, or you can find multiple of the same things. That's where it becomes a little bit different, how you can access the multiple instances that you get. Now, before I go into that topic about the arrays and stuff, let's talk about how to use the code. Because this is not only generating the code for you down here, which you can just copy paste. Basically, if I copy this up and paste it, I'm good to go. But also, you can just copy part of it and use it. So for example, right now, I don't need the whole thing. That includes the whole function and everything. You don't need to do that. If you have, it in, if you have the function saved somewhere, then you can just open up a, your code here. Let's make this a hotkey at one make all of this part of the function. And now, again, as I mentioned, this is important because this text right here is the image that you're looking for. It doesn't look like an image, but it is. And this is the function that we're calling, right? So if it finds it, I want to do something. Let's say message box image, out, right? Now that I have that, I need to include my function. And this is the part that I was saying before. Hey, if you have this saved somewhere like this, then you just need the path to it. I have it in my standard AutoHotKey library, well, the user library in the documents folder. So I could just simply point to the v2 folder. That's where we start here, the v2 folder. 
slash find text, which is the folder, slash find text, which is the file. So find text, find text. And when I put that, I already included the whole thing. And now when I call this function, it will work just fine. So if I run this script and I go to a place where I can find the folder and I hit F1, it should find it. You see, image found. So it did find it. So it's working fine. This is where you will start using logic to do that. But hey, what if I find multiple instances of it? So what would happen with the find text when you get multiple instances is that it will return an array. So in here, let's call this instances, right? And I would say, hey, well, I can keep it as an if statement there. If I didn't find it, let's do this one. If I didn't find it, instances length, right? Look, length, right? So if I didn't have any length, then I will stop the script there. And then if I did have some, then let's go ahead and do some things. And here's the thing. I want the to know how many it found. Sorry? That's what I was saying, display the length, yeah. Right, so let's see how many it finds. So let's run this up. Let's go here, hit F1, and I found 23 instances. Now, I can refer to a given instance, right? And what you will get is an object. So each of the instances that you got is an object, and each of those have the following property. So this is what we get here. Right here is this is what you get. You get the X position, the Y position, the width, the height, and then the middle point, the center point in the X and the center point in the Y. So X is that, Y is that, and you get the ID. And this ID is whatever you set up in the, like this guy. So if you set the folder, I, the name folder, the ID is gonna show up as folder in there. Now this in here, I don't like the fact that it is kind of like numbered. So you see like OK1.1 okay gives you the X position and OK1.2 okay is the Y position. I don't really agree with that. I, yeah, would have thought just We're not the X. as hard work, but yeah, we would it's do a little bit awkward, right? But it's, it's usable. You can use that. So let's do the one in here, and then and I could I could just well do a mouse move to it, right? Right. I will I will save the X and Y positions here. So those are the X and Y, right? And I want to look at what those positions are, right? And if I do that and go to the folder here, we'll just will not, the first one is 107.63, right? But if I change this number to the third one, those two numbers should be different. Yeah, or just use a mouse move and you'll-, and you'll... Right. We're gonna move the mouse and do that. So what we're gonna do, Let's look through them. That's the cool thing about the instances and, and, and having an array. Because now you can say, for instance, right? Instance and instances. So I'm getting each of them individually. We're going to get the X and Y positions for that instance. And then mouse move x and y and then sleep for second i don't know 500 no. and that if i run it would be very interesting it will move the mouse to different various positions of where it found that image and i could send clicks to it and stuff like that and it is interesting that it found in different locations like that. You see that? Now, well, yeah. Go ahead. Part of realizing what you search for. And, you know, sometimes you're going to find things where you didn't realize you would find them. You know what I mean? There's other yes. 
versions of what you're looking for that are being found. So you want to be careful with it. Mouse, so let me set, set, set the coordinate mode. But by the way, um, you know, you use the X and Y, but that was, but if we had used the, what's the one with the, um, the half distance, like wouldn't, that would have picked oh, the center up. point. Yes. That would be different. That's yeah. when you're doing a click. Usually I'll use those coordinates. That's why he does that for you, right? Is you don't have to do math. He does the math for you. And there we right. go. Right. So this is not the center point. This is actually the corner where it was found. But if I wanted the center point, I would use the X and Y like this because the X and Y are the ones that he's using to calculate the center location of the icon. And if I run it again, now notice how the mouse is actually falling in the center of the folder image. So as you can see, really interesting stuff. Um, very useful. And interestingly, we can limit where you're going to search for your stuff. If yeah. I remember right, whenever I was doing the the uh, the get range, I think, right. So you can tell it, click on get range, and I just want to search in here. So right. in the one version of this, he didn't right. have, in my copy of his, I added that to mine. I don't know if he got the idea from what I had done or not, but... It was nice because even though the V1 version was much slower than the initial V1 version was much slower, then he did some things. But it, with three monitors this size, you know, I'm like, why can't I limit where I'm searching? Right? That's ridiculous. Right. Um, so, so I make mean, it very easy to say, look in this. Right. Here on the on the code, you can see that he started with very big numbers here. That is the virtual size of my whole desktop, but. I'm going to change that to instead use a very specific range. I just selected the range and put it in. You can put those manually if you want, right? Sure. Uh, but now, if I use the F1 again, it will not find 23. It will just find those five. Right? It was, again, yeah. even if you don't do what he just said, it's fast. It's remarkably fast because it's really fast. Yeah. The search is being done in C sharp. Is that right? Or C? I forget. Yeah, he's doing. He's using a different language for it, and it is being done. So the since from the time I press the F one to the find it has the length, it's just like microsecond, it's right? I, I find it. It finds all of them right away. Now, after that, right? Um, I just want to mention a few things about it that are not really obvious. Uh, there are some settings that you can use in here in the X and Y, for example. Imagine that you're looking for an image and you want to wait until that image pops up, right? So if I call my function right now, so if there is no in message box, we will see what happens here. Image not found, right? So I'm telling it, search for it. If it doesn't find it, give me a message box. Right now, oh, let me see, hold on, exit. Oh, because it doesn't have a length. Ah, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I could say if not instances, that's fine. So if I say F1, it says image not found. But if you want to have the find text wait indefinitely until it pops up and then do the other part, you have ways of doing that. And if you go to this to the help file, you will notice that the output X could be modified to have the word wait or wait zero, wait one or wait zero. Wait one is to wait for it to show up. Wait zero is to wait for it to disappear. And when you're using one of those two words, the Y, that is the next uh, parameter, you tell it how long in seconds you're going to wait unless you put it at zero or, sorry, if you make a negative number. If it is less than zero, it is infinite waiting and if you have a number in there, so for example, something like, okay, here I want to say wait. And if I make this negative one, that is wait indefinitely until it shows up. And if I run this, the script is not going to tell me that it was not found. It's going to just wait until it pops up. And then my mouse is going to start moving by itself. You see that? So basically, 
you can make it wait until it shuts up or it disappears however you want. Those are somewhat somewhat advanced. I don't want to go too deep into them, but just know that you can do those and the help file explains more or less how to use them. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's just to me, it, again, it, and I'm not knocking his hard work, but that's just really a weird way to have implemented that. It's great right. that the functionality is there. I just don't, it's not intuitive to me. So to me, I'm like, I'm so glad we recorded this video on that because I don't know if I would have figured that out. Even with the documentation, I just been like, what? Like, the, <laughs> no, yeah, wait, it's what? I don't know. Anyway, thank you. All right. Right. Another thing that you have to understand about these guys is that this function, when you find an object, you can use a click command that it has available for you to click the thing that you found, all right? So this is interesting. The only thing is that click command allows you to specify offsets. This, this is X and Y particularly there that you can add numbers to it like plus 20. So if you want that or plus five, however you want, the, the idea here is once you find the image that you're looking for, you probably not always want to click right on the image itself. You might want to click something that is right next to it. That's so where when, the sets apply. When Maestrith and I created Automate My Task, right, we borrowed the concept from the original fine text. And yeah. many things he didn't have it at that time. I don't know, again, I don't know if he borrowed it back from us or what, but that ability to, he didn't have enough functionality to click. Right, and I'm like, this we it was just finding the spot, right? Which was great, but I'm like, why don't why isn't that part of it? So we built it in, and then we realized sometimes I find that, but I really want to click something offset from it, right? Something to the right a bit, or I want to add text. So in automate my task, we have that ability to either click or to send text to a certain point, right? And yes. I don't remember. Does this have the you can send text? I thought I saw that, but. Um, uh, that's interesting. Uh, I didn't really look at all the functions that you have, but it is a class, okay? And it has a few things that you can do. You can join texts, find a picture. That's interesting. Uh, you have other tools. Take a screenshot. I didn't know all of that. The OCR is crazy. Board stuff. You have what is called a mouse tip. It used the mouse tip. Then you have the save. That's interesting too. And so on. Really I don't know if you can if you can. Oh, there, there's a click here. How many pixels you found? Oh. So there's a lot of interesting things going on. It's a lot of functionality to it. I would say two things. First of all, the implementation is not straightforward. So that's why you need to either read the documentation or have a video like this, you know, that we're trying to show you how it works. But the other one is not only is it a little bit weirdly, but it has too much, too many functionality. There's too much functionality. You can set the ranges. Error tolerance in percentages, we didn't talk about that, but after the range, you can set up kind of like error errors that you're allowed to tolerate when it's looking for an image so that it doesn't look exactly for that image, but it's looking for something similar, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, offsets, also images and stuff like that. So it's... It's interesting. Really. Something that's really important to realize, and we didn't really talk much about here, and it comes up a lot with Automate My Tasks, people ask how to do it. This is really for finding that and now clicking. But if you want to do logic, if you want to say, well, when I find this, go do something, that's you shift back to programming and auto hotkey, right? That's yes. not what this tool or Automate My Task or any of it's for. It's to find it and possibly click. In our tool, you send text. But right. For that, then you decide other actions you're going to do, and you program in auto hotkey around it, right? This is just because right. what's cool, and Isaiah didn't state it outright, but on line 10 to the right there, that's a binary representation of the picture. So you, unlike with the built-in auto hotkey image search, you don't have to save an actual file to your computer of that, right. 
right? Which is awesome because then it makes it really easy to share this stuff with other people or whatever. But again, when you do that, immature often breaks. So don't don't go too crazy on that. Uh, but it is very handy to be able to have that as a binary, you know, in in your script makes it much okay. easier. Um, it's a then again, this is just the intro and. I know what because we reverse engineered the original fine text and Matrix followed the whole path down the the M code on that stuff, and after a lot of work, he's like, "Oh, he 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 did a really good job." Um, it's crazy complicated what you can do, but this was just the basics to get you going. Now, if by the way you're not familiar with objects, our course covering objects would really help you work with fine text because we cover objects and classes in our our objects functions and classes course. That is right. All right. Well, if you learned something here, um, please like the video. It really helps us out. We, I think, just passed 10,000 subscribers. So we're the largest auto hockey channel out there, and we release videos three times a week. I uh, hope to see you soon. Cheers. Bye.